So I recently picked up this Creality Ender 3 V2 and I got it from Mech Solutions. That's mechestore.com and I'll put a link in the video description down below. I'd highly encourage you guys to go check them out. They're a group of people very passionate about 3D printing. They have a nice line of filament. I'm using their PLA Plus here and it prints very smooth. They also have a great rewards program that's worth signing up for on their website where you can exchange points for discounts on future purchases, which is awesome when you're going through a lot of consumables like filament. Now the Ender 3 is one of the most popular platforms, 3D printing platforms out there on the market today. And there are a lot of clones of this machine almost part for part. And so any upgrade that you do to the Ender 3 will also likely work on a clone machine. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the adjustable Z end stop that I designed. Now you can find all of those 3D printable parts available in the video description down below. I always make all of my design files available so you can go and download those. And right now we're gonna be taking a look at this adjustable Z end stop, why you'd wanna use it and how you can install it on the Ender 3 or your clone. Let's get started. Taking a look at the 3D model of the Ender 3 V2, you can see where I've installed the adjustable Z end stop. And what this is going to allow you to do is to make easy adjustments to your Z home position. So the limit switch is gonna ride on this orange bumper and the thumb screw in yellow is going to allow you to make very fast adjustments to the position of that limit switch, which is in effect going to control your Z zero position on this machine. The mount that comes with the Ender 3 for the Z limit switch would normally have to be loosened off with the socket head cap screws on the side of the extrusion to make these adjustments. And then of course you're doing it by hand and so you're going to loosen it too much. It's gonna move around a whole bunch and you're not gonna get a very precise movement of the limit switch. In this case, as you can see in this assembly, the thumb screw is controlling an M3 socket head cap screw which has a 0.5 millimeter pitch. So you get a very fine amount of control over the bumper which is controlling again the position of the limit switch. So this is why you would want to do this. Getting rid of the original mount is very easy. There are two socket head cap screws clearly visible on the side of the mount. You can simply loosen those off and the whole thing will pop right off and then you can just remove the electrical connector and the whole thing has been removed. From there, you're going to want to completely remove those socket head cap screws and the T-nuts because we're gonna be reusing them. And then the little PCB and the connector which carries the limit switch can be removed with the two Phillips head screws and those will just unscrew and the whole thing will come off. Now you're gonna grab the three new parts that you 3D printed. There's the main body, the thumb screw, and then the bumper. And we're gonna be focusing on the bumper first. You're going to need a brass M3 insert. These threaded brass inserts are typically pressed in with heat. And to do that, I've built a heat set press and I'll show you guys how to do that. You can find a link in the top right hand corner of the screen, but not to worry if you don't want to invest in building one of these things, you can simply just press it in with a regular soldering iron tip. And you can do it by hand reasonably straight enough. Get it as straight and plumb into that piece as possible by hand if again, you're not interested in making one of these machines. Clearly the advantage of building something like this is making the process very easily repeatable. And so here is the end result. Next, we're gonna attach the limit switch to the new bumper and we're gonna have the limit switch facing up, whereas the brass fitting is facing down. We're gonna be reusing those Phillips head screws to attach the PCB to the bumper and they should thread directly right into that 3D printed part if the tolerances of your 3D printer are half decent. Otherwise, if that hole size is off a little bit, you may just have to drill those holes out for a little more clearance, and then the threads will self-tap. Now we can take a look at the thumb screw and body assembly. So you're gonna need an M3 by 20 socket head cap screw and an M3 locking nut. That locking nut is going to be placed into the thumb screw. There's a recess for that. And then you're gonna take your M3 by 20 socket head cap screw and the large body piece here. You're gonna insert the thumb screw into that slot. The M3 by 20 socket head cap screw gets inserted through the bottom. And you're just going to thread that all the way in until the head completely bottoms out. And now that thumb screw should be retained inside of the body. Now we're gonna reuse the original mounting hardware and if you'll notice that there are two holes on the side here 
on this particular piece that I'm holding in my hand. If you've already printed these files or have gone to the link in the video description to find these files, the main body has an extra hole in the front. And you also would have seen that at the beginning of this video in the 3D model. So I've updated this piece here to be a newly revised part with that extra hole in the front. And in this clip here where you see me mounting it to the frame, again, you'll see me using the two holes on the side. What I would suggest doing is using the top hole on the side and then the hole in the front of this part that I had referenced earlier in this video uh, in the 3D model. So that's gonna give you a more secure and stable mounting solution to the frame, the one hole on the side and the one hole on the front of the frame to really secure that main body piece to the aluminum extrusions using that T-slot nut hardware. And so what I've done here is I've taken the bumper and just slipped it into the top and then turned the thumb screw in the downward direction to draw the bumper into the main body piece using that M3 socket head cap screw that would be sticking up. After that, you're gonna turn your machine on and you are going to now be homing the machine in the Z direction. While the machine is homing, you'll notice that I'm manipulating the position of the assembly by hand. And so those mounting screws have not yet been fully tightened down. I'm looking for the distance between the nozzle and the print bed. And I'm just doing this by eye as I continually home the machine. So you want a slight gap. If you can eyeball it, the thickness of a piece of paper, you'll see in this case that I did make contact there. Obviously don't put that thing too low at first because you don't want to grind the nozzle into the print bed. But what I'm trying to do here is just find a zero position as close to the print bed as possible and then I can tighten down the mounting hardware. With the mounting hardware tight, I can home the machine again and I can use the thumb screw to make any fine adjustments I need to get the nozzle, the thickness of a piece of paper away from the print bed and now I have the whole thing set up where I want it to be set up. And all of my bed leveling screws are more or less in the same position because now you're going to want to make sure your bed is of course level and you can go through that traditional bed leveling procedure again with your piece of paper to make sure that your bed is level and your print head is trammed to that print surface. And now you can run your favorite bed leveling test print to ensure that the bed is level and your Z offset is correct. Now on this machine and many other machines, you can of course also adjust the Z offset through the software, but I don't like falling back on these sorts of software compensations for things that I feel should be correct mechanically. I feel like the philosophy of building a 3D printer is like building a nice strong home where you want a strong mechanical foundation. And in this case, the mechanical setup of your printer is like your home's foundation. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily the best analogy, but it does make sense to me in my head. And at the end of the day, you get some really fantastic and repeatable results with this setup. And so you can see this beautiful first layer here that I'm laying down again with the Mech Solutions gold PLA filament. And as that second layer starts to get filled in, you can really see how nice and consistent the first layer is that I was able to achieve with this setup. And here's the final print using that filament. The layer lines are barely visible and that's fantastic for such an inexpensive machine. That's it for this video. I hope you guys found it useful for the Creality Ender 3 or an Ender 3 clone. Don't forget, I make all of the part files available in the video description down below, so go find that link. You'll also find a link to Mech Solutions, that's mechestore.com, and you will find one more link to Cloud 3D Print, and that's a project of Mech Solutions. They're currently in beta testing, so if you like being on the cutting edge of 3D printing, click that link, find out what it's all about. I'm gonna be getting into more of that in a future video, so be sure to subscribe to see that future video, and hopefully you drop a like on this video if you like this and found it useful. Thanks for watching.